Good morning, Hope Church. Good morning. It's great to see everybody out here on this beautiful Sunday morning, last Sunday of August 2020. What a privilege it is to be here with you and to see all of your smiling masks. And uh, hopefully uh, it won't be quite as warm today as it has been in the last few weeks. But uh, I've got a few announcements for us as we begin our worship service this morning. My first announcement is that if you're joining us online or you're here with us today, you can text the 94090 and text in the message line service, S-E-R-V-I-C-E, -E, and then you can follow along with the words to the songs that Lester's going to be leading us here in a few moments, as well as the announcements, as well as some of the things that... Uh, will be in my sermon, so you can take a look at that and look at that on your cell phone and follow along with us if you'd like to do that. Then as I mentioned last week, we're going to have an all-church meeting immediately following this service next Sunday, and we have an offer on the property that we'd like to present to the congregation, so it's uh, something that uh, we're excited about, looking forward to, to sharing with you. And as you know, in our church, uh, we all vote on everything. And so we're meeting as a leadership board on Tuesday night and then meeting with the congregation next week to talk about some of the things that are going on there. Good stuff happening there. And then uh, as I think about the future and we look a little bit at what's going on uh, around the country and in our state, uh, we have come off the watch list. San Diego County is now uh, coming off of the uh, quarantine period. And so we are going to be starting services back inside the second week of September. And that service will be at 1045, the second week of September, starting in the, in the uh, sanctuary. And so I need uh, those of you that would like to attend that service to RSVP at uh, HopeChurchVista.com, info at HopeChurchVista.com. Or you can email me at Matt at HopeChurchVista.com. Or you can just call the church and leave a message, or you can call my cell phone and leave a message. However you want to RSVP, we'd like for you to do that so we know how to set up the chairs, do all the things that uh, need to happen for that service. And Lester will continue to lead uh, an outside service here at 9 a.m. And so in September, we're still going to have our ball field service at 9 a.m. with Lester and the band leading. And then at 10.45, uh, Tyler and Krista will be leading worship in the sanctuary. So just want you to know kind of what's going on. And as things develop and as things go forward, we'll continue to share with you what's happening and all the things that are going on. So if you uh, want to take a look at the announcements there, anything else that uh, you need to mention or be aware of, we appreciate everybody being here this morning. And as we begin our worship service, if you'd like to dance before the Lord, that's fine. Go out over into the uh, infield here and uh, enjoy your worship time there and then come back and we'll just remain seated where you're at for now. Uh, I'm hoping that by this time next year, I'll never have to make that announcement again. <laughs> but uh, this is where we're at and this is what we're trying to do to love each other and to make sure that everybody stays safe and healthy. I can continue to report uh, with uh, with a lot of satisfaction and and, uh, and a lot of uh, empath empathic concern that not one person in our church has come down with this virus and not one person Hallelujah. that we in our in our family. So we praise the Lord for that. So praise the Lord for that. And we want to continue to be safe and careful, and we are going to continue to do that. So. Let's just bow our heads for a moment and ask God's presence to be with us. Heavenly Father, we recognize your presence here on this ball field on this beautiful Sunday morning. We welcome those that are here with us. We welcome those that are also watching this service online. We ask your blessing over this time of worship and over this time of studying your word. Lord, we pray that you'd be with your church, not just here, but around the world. We pray, God, that as we navigate uh, these uncertain times, that for just these next few moments as we gather here in this place, your presence will once again be with us. And as your people, as we gather to worship you, 
that your presence will meet every person at the point of their need this morning, and that you will be honored and glorified in everything that's said and done. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Now, so you heard him. You, you can dance if you really want to, but even if you just kind of want to wiggle around or clap your hands, that's all good. Let's, let's worship our Lord together. Yeah. 
what we need before we say He doesn't get to play a lot, so he comes and he plays and he really sounds. He really touches me over here. I try and not. Sometimes I have to try and not listen to him because he sounds so good over there. I just go, oh, dang. <laughs> Forget the words, you know. Uh, this the next song we'd like to do is, uh, is, uh, yeah. Great lyrics. These songs this morning, I'm serious. I was going, dang. I don't even think about that sometimes. I just pick the songs because they relate to what I think he might speak about.
Thank you, praise team, for that time of worship. We're going to continue to worship here in just a moment, but I have just a follow-up uh, to what we were talking about earlier, and that is at our all-church meeting next week, we invite people who are not members to stay as well. We don't want you to feel excluded, and we want you to know what's going on. And for those of you joining us online, we will have a Zoom uh, set up as well that you can check into and you can be a part of that meeting if you're a member and can't make it to church for some reason. We appreciate your continued giving. We have a place to give here in the back on the table. And for those of you that are giving online and sending in your uh, tithe, we thank you so much for that. We appreciate that. And for those of you that may be wondering about selling the church property, we're not selling the church. <laughs> we're not, just so you know. We're selling a little section up here, about two and a half acres, a little less than that. So we're not, we're keeping... The church we're keeping the property we're doubling the size of our ministry campus even when the dust settles and this piece of property is sold so i just don't want you to think somebody online said oh you're selling the property what does that mean the church is no we're not selling the church just want to make sure everybody's clear on that uh, and uh, there are no misunderstandings so as we think about what god mercy god's mercy does for us and, and what his blessings are over us uh, you may have noticed that my beautiful wife did not read the scripture this morning as she normally has been and that's because uh, she was on a mini retreat this past week and she was up in Palm Springs at the uh, resort there and she was getting into the lazy river and they had just cleaned and they had uh, put some cleaning solution on the rubber pad there that made it very slippery and when she got into the lazy river she broke three toes so she didn't want to stumble up here onto the platform this morning and uh, read scripture, so uh, please understand why she's not here. Uh, we're still very much in love and everything's good. <laughs> I did I did tell her I was going to get some mileage out of somebody who broke three toes in the lazy river, though. I told her I was going to tease her about that a little bit for a while. <laughs> but uh, we love her and we pray for her and we ask God's blessing over this time as we worship together. And so there may be prayer requests, prayer needs, maybe somebody in... Uh, and uh, your life has uh, been struggling a little bit. I know uh, Brenda's here with a broken arm this morning. So, uh, you know, we just, we don't, we never know what's going on in people's lives, do we? Never know what's happening. So let's just pause for a moment. And if you have somebody that's, uh, you'd like to pray for in, in, uh, in your life, and you'd like to just make an unspoken request as you think of their name, could you just raise your hand right now as you think of that person that you love that you're praying for? All across the ball field this morning, people's hands are raised. 
thinking of someone in their life that they're praying for. Let's just pause for a moment, pray for that person right now. Heavenly Father, you have seen these hands that were raised. And Lord, we're so thankful for your mercy and how it speaks into our lives today as we just sang together. And Lord, as, as these hands were raised, I felt in my spirit the burden that is being carried for some of these people's uh, uh, families and, and friends, the things that are going on in people's lives. We just never know what's happening, Lord. But you do, and you know us better than we know ourselves. And Lord, I just pray right now for these people that are represented by these hands that were raised. Lord, we don't know where they are. We don't know who they are. But you do, and we're praying for each one of them individually right now as these hands have been represented to be prayers for this person. And so, Lord, I ask that you would be with them, whatever the need is, whatever the concern is, whatever the situation is. Lord, there may be people that are suffering with illness or disease. There may be people that are suffering with financial issues. There may be people that just don't know you and need to find you and need to connect with who they are. So, Lord... Whatever the need, whatever the burden, whatever the situation, we ask, Lord, that you be with them, watch over them, strengthen them, encourage them, lead them, and guide them, and direct them. And Lord, I just pray that uh, you watch over those who suffered with broken bones this week. I pray for my wife that she'll find full healing in those uh, bones in her foot. And as she goes to the surgeon on Tuesday, Lord, I just pray you'd watch over everything that happens. Lord, you know all the different things that we deal with, you know all the different things that are going on in our lives. We give them to you. We're so thankful we have our church family here today and online, loving each other, praying for each other, being there for each other. And we ask your blessing and your healing touch over every person in our congregation and for those we prayed for right now. We pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Well, uh, it's a little hot to be standing up, but so just stay.
Okay. Well, that's a good admonition, isn't it? Yeah. We're not going to let the rocks outpraise us. And we are studying from Luke chapter 13 today. For those of you that have your Bibles or those of you online that would like to get your Bibles, we're in Luke chapter 13. An interesting parable, an interesting story that Jesus tells. And he's in this chapter talking to the people about who they are who they are as a people, who they are as the people of God. And what does that look like? How is that reflected? And he tells this story and it, you know, for me, I want stories to have a, a good ending. And I drove by the movie theater the other day, downtown Vista, there in, in the Sinopolis, and it says, we all know from learning from movies that movies have good endings. We hope to see you soon. And I thought to myself, well, we hope that movies have good endings, don't we? I mean, have you ever seen a movie that just had a horrible ending and you thought, why did I even sit down and watch that to begin with? <laughs> we want our stories to have a little bow tied on them and everything's good and all it all worked out and then they rode off into the sunset together and I always wondered about that you know riding off into the sunset together two people on a horse going into the dark how is that a good thing you know <laughs> anyway side note but the the idea of, a, of an ending this this parable this story doesn't tell us what happened but it gives us enough information to look beyond the story to the deeper part of what Jesus was saying to his people and to us this morning. So in Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse 6, we have this parable. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down, why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it, and if it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Now, when Jesus was speaking, he was talking to people who understood the value of a fig tree. For those of you that know, and I know that Georgian Olga may be watching online. I love Fig Newtons. And uh, ever since COVID started, I've lost my lifetime supply of Fig Newtons because George and Olga would always bring me a box of Fig Newtons about once a month, so I would have some Fig Newton cookies. And I thought about bringing Fig Newton cookies for all the kids, but then I thought they probably wouldn't even think they were that good. How many of you kids over here eat Fig Newtons? Let's see. One, not you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, back there, Fig Newtons, anybody? See, kind of gone out of style. So you don't really understand the importance of the fig tree unless you understand the culture that, that was, that was in, during that time. The fig tree was a very important part of their diet, a very nutritious uh, plant and, and a nutritious fruit that when you ate it, it was just, it took you a long ways. And... They had fig trees that would have hundreds of, of figs on them and, and just burdened down with figs. And the thing about a fig tree is that when it begins to grow and when it begins to produce fruit, it actually produces fruit before it produces leaves every year. It doesn't produce leaves to begin with. The tree's just there. And all of a sudden, the little buds begin to form and that fruit begins to form all over the tree and it isn't until summertime that the leaves really come in on a Mediterranean fig tree. So if you're an owner of a vineyard and you're walking through your vineyard and you're looking at your fig tree, 
and you see that it doesn't have any fruit on it, you know there's a problem. Because you know the next thing that comes isn't more fruit, it's leaves. And that's what the tree is going to spend its time doing. So you could have this beautiful fig tree with all the leaves and all the beauty of the leaves and the shade of the leaves, but no fruit. And that tree is not fulfilling its purpose. It's not fulfilling what it was intended to be or to become. The fig tree itself is mentioned over 50 times in Scripture. And when things were doing good in Israel and things were really prospering, it says in 1 Kings, the Bible describes every man sitting under his own fig tree. I can't think of a, of a modern example of people who proudly sit under trees of any kind, in particular here in California. We have all kinds of trees. But back then, if you had a big fig tree that was producing fruit and you sat under that tree, it was a sign of prosperity. It was a sign that things were going well. It was a sign that things were doing good. On the other hand, when judgment came to the people of Israel, in Jeremiah 5.17, it talks about all the fig trees being destroyed, cut down. So this tree was not just any type of a tree. It was an important example of prosperity and judgment for the people of God. It wasn't just another tree that produced fruit. It was a tree that was essential to their diet and essential to who they were. And so when this man, this owner of this vineyard, looks at this tree and says, you know, I've been coming to this tree year after year after year, and there's no fruit on it. He talks to the manager of the vineyard, and he says, you know, this isn't working out. Let's just get rid of it. But the manager of the vineyard, the one who was there, the one who was taking care of things, said, you know what? Let me just have one more chance with this tree. Let me fertilize it. Let me work with it. Let me see what I can do to make a difference in this tree. And then if it doesn't work out, then we'll take care of it. And that's kind of where the story ends. And so I was looking for the story beyond the story in this parable, in this, in this expression of faith and trust and love and all the things that go along with the parables and the relationship with God that we have. And I thought, what is this parable telling us? What does this parable teach us? And the first part of the story that talks to us about what this story means to us is this. And there's a couple life-changing principles I want to share with you right now. And the first one is, we must live out who we were designed to be. We must live out who we were designed to be. When God made all the designs in the world, when God put everything into place, when God formed all the plants and the trees and everything else, the last thing he did was create us. We were the end of everything else he had set out to accomplish. And when he created us, he designed us very specifically. He designed us in a way that is very consistent. He designed us in a way that is beautiful and beyond comprehension. The old King James says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. It means that we are made beyond comprehension. The doctors and the nurses in our church know that we are just beginning to scratch the surface of what we know about our own creation, about how we're made and what that looks like. I was reading an article this week about design and, and, and how the scientists are working on something called Neuralink. And Elon Musk is behind a company called Neuralink that will hook up little electrodes to a, to a brain and be able to help that brain function in ways that it could not otherwise function. They've done it now on uh, test animals, uh, most recently in pigs, and they've attached electrodes to the brain of pigs, and, and they're figuring out how things work. So somebody with a serious brain injury or some other physical problem could one day 
be helped by this program. You could also see all kinds of ways where this could be abused, couldn't you? Wouldn't it be great for some of you young college students if you could just buy a little chip for $40,000 and implant it in the back of your brain and you have access to everything a surgeon would need to know? You wouldn't have to go to school. You just get a chip, 40 grand, implant it in the back of your head, and all of a sudden you know everything a surgeon does. Wow. What could the future look like if all it was about was buying computer chips to install in your brain, just like we do now with computers? But what would be missing from that equation would be that we are more than just a mind, we are more than just knowledge, we are more than just a physical body, we are also an eternal soul, and all those things are connected together to create something that is specific in its design and in its format in every possible way. And when those three things, body, soul, and mind, are working together, and we're living in the design that God created us to be, things begin to be produced. And more than just leaves, there, there begins to be fruit that gets produced. And that fruit is my next thought. And that is this. What we do is evidence of our purpose. When we are living the way God designed us to live, when we are doing the things that God wants us to do, we will naturally and without fail produce evidence of God's working in our lives. Evidence that something's going on that makes us different. As the people of God, we are different. We think about life differently. We think about love differently. We think about purpose differently. We think about who we are differently. And as magnificent as a fig tree is, as wonderful as it is, without its fruit, it is not living out the evidence of its purpose. It's not living out the, the way it was created to, to function. And if you're not bearing fruit in your life right now, then you need to step back from yourself for just a moment and say, where in my life is, is the things that I'm supposed to be doing, why, why are these things not happening? The evidence of the fruit of the Spirit in our life is love and joy and peace. Do you have that evidence of God's life in your life? If you don't, then I encourage you to, to step back from yourself and say, God, help me in this situation to know what it is that I need to be doing. Jesus was telling this story to a group of people who really didn't understand why Jesus was even there, really. They, some of them thought they did, but they didn't really know what Jesus was there to do and why he was there. But he did. And the deeper story behind the story is that Jesus had been ministering now for about three years as he's telling this parable. And for the last three years of his ministry, there had not been a lot of dramatic changes and a lot of people had rejected his message and a lot of people weren't understanding what he was there to do. I can imagine him and the father having a conversation that said, you know, Jesus, you've been down there for three years. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> you're healing, you're raising the dead, you're, and they're still mad and upset with you. Let's just cut this thing down. Let's start over. But the wonderful thing about the story that God tells us and the wonderful thing about my relationship with God is that I am confident in this one thing. Jesus is patient with us. He is patient with us. He knows where we're at. He knows what we're struggling with. He knows all the things that make us tick. He knows all the things that we're that, we, that we're disappointed with. He knows the things that are going to make us happy, and he is so unbelievably patient with us. And I can imagine him and God the Father having the conversation where Jesus says, you know, let me, let me work with this tree a little bit longer. 
Let me dig around the roots of this tree. Let, let me fertilize a little bit. Let me, let me do some things here, and then let's see how it goes. Let's see if we can't make this thing produce fruit. And in your own life, if you aren't producing much fruit right now and you don't feel like there's a lot of fruit for your efforts and your labors, <laughs> don't give up on yourself and don't give up on Jesus because he's going to be patient with you to help you through the things that you're struggling with in life. If you're saying to yourself, this is not working out the way I want it to. My life is not going the direction that I thought it would. There's a lot of things that have happened that have put me on different paths that I never wanted to be on and never anticipated being on. You can say, you know what? From this story, I know that Jesus is going to be patient with me. And I know that if I can just do the best I can to do the things he wants me to do and understanding that as I live out the story he's called me to live out, I can find his blessing and truth and his love and his joy and his peace. Continue to live towards that in your life. And then let's talk about what a fig tree is supposed to produce for just a moment. A fig tree is supposed, is supposed to produce figs. And when it does, it produces that fruit in abundance. But there are some years where it's not as good as others. It's just like anything else. There's some years you have more, you have less. And all these things are going on in your life. And, and, and there are some times when you feel like maybe you're not getting as much accomplished as you used to get accomplished. Maybe you can't work as long as you used to work. Or maybe you get tired easily. Maybe you're done by noon. I don't know where your, uh, where your fruit quotient might be this morning. But I want to encourage you in this. Young people, those of you that are sitting over here that are trying to figure out life, and uh, some of you college students are getting ready to go to college, some of you young parents that are looking at how to raise your children, some of you that have been going through some difficult times in your life, maybe there's some of you watching online or here today who are struggling with the separation of your family or divorce, financial problems, circumstances that may be going on, whatever it is that you are going through right now, I want you to know this, what you do to bless others what you do to bless others is one of the most important reasons why we are here. And when we give to others and when we bless others and when we are generous with others, something changes inside our own hearts and our own minds and our own lives. Something begins to rise up and it feels great to be able to do something for someone else, to be able to provide for someone else, to be able to serve someone else. When we do that, and when that gets accomplished in our lives, and that fruit begins to bud, and then people begin to see that, and then they begin to come to us, and we are able to share with them and give them what we're able to do and what we're able to provide, our purpose begins to be lived out. And those things that we want to accomplish and those things that we all want to become begin to be lived out. The greatest gifts that we have are the gifts that we give. Not the gifts that we receive. The things that we give to others. That fig tree was not producing the way it was supposed to. But the one thing that it was producing <laughs> was the one thing that Genesis tells us that Adam and Eve covered themselves with when they were ashamed before God. <laughs> the first time the fig tree is mentioned in the Bible, it's Adam and Eve trying to figure out how to cover up themselves in their shame, and that's what they used to do it. The tree that didn't bear any fruit was still had a purpose, even if it was to cover shame. Thinking about what it means in your own life to stand before God unashamed. Think about that for just a moment. Think about what it means to be able to stand before God and not be ashamed. To say, God, I know that I'm not perfect. 
I know that I don't have it all together. I know I don't have it all figured out, but God, because you have come into my life and with patience and love, you have taken my life and you've begun to work with me and you've begun to give me the things that I need to be able to produce fruit because of what you've done in my life. I can live out my purpose and my plan and live before you without shame. I can be in a relationship with you where I feel your love and your grace and your mercy every day. And I don't have to live in bondage or in depression. I know there's a lot of low-grade depression going on during this time with all the chaos and the uncertainty. God, I can live beyond that depression. I can live beyond those fears. I can live beyond all the stuff that's going on. People are so concerned about our country and all the things that are happening and all the things that are going on, but yet God's still calling us to his quiet presence of confidence and assurance that as we live before him the way he's called us to live, he will help us to produce what we were intended to produce and live out the purpose of our lives unashamed before him. I had a conversation with somebody this week and they were contemplating sinning. They were contemplating doing something they knew they shouldn't do. So they came to me. Wrong person. <laughs> now, I didn't preach him into hell. But I did I did say, here's the thing you need to know. God's still going to love you, even if you do this thing. You're still going to be loved by God. God's still going to be patient with you. God's still going to work with you. God's still going to be there for you. But what you do, you do not do alone. You affect someone else. And when you affect someone else, it's no longer just about you. It's about that other person. You see, the story of this fig tree wasn't just about one person or one tree. It was a story about an entire community of people who were not doing what they needed to do. And that one tree was an example. You say, well, my life doesn't really matter that much. The little things I do don't matter that much. They absolutely do. They absolutely make a difference. The owner had a whole vineyard. Why is he picking on this one tree? Because it's not living out its purpose. As you think about who you are, realize the importance of who you are and the importance of who you are to everyone else. And how much of a difference your life makes when you choose the path of righteousness. You don't just affect yourself. You have that same effect, a ripple effect across the entire community because we have men and women who are living right and doing right and making a difference. Producing fruit. Producing what God has intended. Producing what your purpose is and living out your purpose in your life. Are you doing that today? Are you living that purpose out? Are you living into the person that God has intended you to be? doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter how young you are, doesn't matter who you are, you can live out your intended purpose. This week I had the funniest thing happen to me. I was driving by our neighbor, and uh, I hope he doesn't watch this video. But if he does, he'll get a good laugh out of it. His son was uh, outside the house. And he had a, a big box, and he had a, a, some rollers underneath the box, and he was rolling the box around. And I thought, that's kind of unusual, so I stopped. And I said, hey, how's it going? He said, it's going good. I said, what are you doing with the box? He said, well, my sister's in the box. <laughs> he said, but... Uh, I put I put something to drink in there with a sandwich, so she's good. <laughs> and through the top of the box, I saw this little hand. And she said, I'm good. I'm small and flexible, and I've got a sandwich. 
and I realized that they were just playing. I realized they were just having fun. They were having a good time. But it didn't make sense that he was pushing around the box till I understood that him and his sister were playing together. They were having a good time. They were sharing together. And so I thought to myself, Lord, <laughs> help me to be able to trust you in the kind of relationship that even if I feel like I'm being pushed around the parking lot of life in a box, I know you're there for me. I know you're watching out for me. I know you're going to be there with me. I know that no matter what happens, you're not going to let anything bad happen to me. Just like that big brother wasn't going to let anything bad happen to his little sister. They were having a good time. Everything was good. But from the outside looking in, it just looked kind of strange. Well, I just want to encourage you. Don't, don't be in bondage to what anybody else thinks about what you're doing and who you are. If things are going well with you and you're doing the things that God wants you to do, live that out. Live the fruit out that God has intended you to produce. Live the fruit out that God wants you to be and who he wants you to be. Because in the end, what really matters is your relationship with your Heavenly Father and then how you produce that love into the people that you're with and that you love and that you're there for. So I pray that God will bless this story to your heart today. I pray that you'll live out your design purpose. I'll pray that God will help you in this week to produce some fruit for the people in your life and be able to share that and give that to them in ways that maybe you haven't before. Take some time to step back from yourself. Choose to live righteously this week. Choose to live in such a way that God can bless you in your life. This person that I talked to chose to go back into that situation <clears throat> and do the right thing. They chose to do the right thing. It wasn't easy. It was difficult. It was tough. But they chose to do the right thing. And the conversation that I had of victory and joy and, and the love that came into that conversation because of that decision made the difficulty of that decision worth it all. And so I pray with you that God will help you in your life as you're thinking about who you are and how you live. To live towards the horizon of eternity with a smile on your face in confidence that you're doing the right things that God wants you to do as you live out this week. Lester, would you close us with a song, please? Lord, you found me and you healed me. You called me from the grave. You gave me real love. Thank you, Jesus. You washed my sins away. Now I am living like I'm forgiven. You came to set me free. That's what your mercy did for me. That's what your mercy did. For those of you joining us online, for those of you that are here today, just pause for a moment, ask God's blessing over your life, whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be dealing with. If you don't know the manager of the vineyard in this story, Jesus is here to encourage you, to strengthen you, to help you, to bless you, to help you live out your intended purpose. If you'll just listen to the words that he tells us. If you'll live by the words that he teaches. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to study your word. Lord, I know that there are men and women here and watching online that are struggling with life, struggling with temptation, struggling with desire, struggling with their own sense of who they are. So Lord, I pray for your forgiveness and your grace. I ask, Lord, that you be with those who may not know you. They'll come to you and they'll find you they'll know who you are, that they'll say to you, 
Help me to live out my intended purpose. Help me to be who you want me to be. Lord, I pray that as we pray that prayer together, that you'll change our hearts. That the mercy of the very throne room of heaven that comes down to this earth will flow into our spirits and in our souls. Fill us with your love and your grace. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are and for what you do in our lives. Bless each person and each family here today. And every person watching online, may we know your presence and may we live in your presence. And may we bear fruit because of who you are within us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.